Greetings from Finland. It's now minus 7 degrees Celsius and we are now at the Kempor charging station and we have two Toyota EVs. This video is about DC charging a Series 1 and Series 3 BC4 in cold climate. The following applies for European spec front wheel drive vehicles and all wheel drives as they are both equipped with Panasonic battery. In North America the all wheel drive has a cattle battery which is different, I mean even louser characteristics. But let's first take a look at the different series of BC4X. When Toyota first shipped the BC4X in late 2022, the otherwise nice cars were seriously lacking some charging capabilities. The Series 1 had 7 kW one phase AC charging and heavily throttled DC charging after 80%. Also, the instrument cluster didn't show the state of charge, the consumption figure was 10% off, on purpose, and there was a huge 30km buffer under the zero range. And yeah, you could only DC charge 90kWh per day, or you'd get a penalizing DC charge throttling. Some remedy came in spring 2023, when Toyota introduced the Series 2. It got rid of the consumption figure offset, added the state of charge percentage to instrument cluster, cut down the below zero buffer to around 20 km, relieved some throttling from the DC charging, and increased the daily D DC charging limit to around 170 kWh. Also, the AC charging was upgraded to 3 phase 11 kW1. Everything else except the new onboard charger was also upgraded free of charge to Series 1 vehicles. With these little fixes, the nice car became even nicer. The state of charge percentage of the buffer below zero actually depends on the projected consumption as it will get you around 20 kilometers in a case. So in one warm weather it might be 8% but in the cold it could be whopping 14%. Either case this is not an issue as you can take this into account and safely push beyond zero range at least for some time. They say that the name of the car is from this driving situation as in driving beyond zero for x miles. You can guess the met range from the power bar from the small line depicting the power limit. When it hits zero, your car stops. The daily DC charging limit is not an issue in the summer as we proved in our previous tests. You can easily drive around 1000 km before the throttle takes effect, get a good or bad night's sleep and then drive and charge again. The throttling is pretty murderous though when it takes effect. The real problem of the car was the battery management system with seriously underpowered thermal control system. Ideally in the summertime you would get a charging cable like this, but it was usually only for the first charge of the trip. The car couldn't get rid of the heat buildup in the battery fast enough, so in the next DC charges you would get a power throttling like in this car. This was only in the summer as in the winter the BMS can't keep the battery warm enough and you end up receiving charging curves like this in minus 20 degrees Celsius. In the BC4X you can't preheat the battery for charging, so the only heating comes from the puny 1 kW heat exchanger in the battery fluid circulation system. This is where the Series 3 comes into play. In 2024 they introduced an upgraded design with a coupling between the battery coolant circulation and the cabin coolant circulation, like in this diagram. It allowed the battery to be heated with the MITRE 7 kW heat exchanger in the cabin coolant system in addition to its own 1 kW system. Or at least this is my understanding of the system sourced from the internet. I'm an infantry officer, not a Toyota engineer, so I'll take this with a pinch of salt. There is a way of telling which series you have just by looking at the charging port. If it says BEV, it's a Series 3. Series 2 and 1 has the text electric. And if that's the case, flip the cover open. In series 1 you will find 3 connectors in the type 2 socket. In series 2 you will find all 5 of them. But back to our charging test, where we are driving series 1 and series 3 BC4X head to head. The series 1 is my own with 60,000 km on the clock, and the series 3 is banking new on a test drive from the Toyota dealership Toyota Itäkeskus in Helsinki, Finland, who are happy to help you with any of your Toyota needs. We are, by the way, doing the test on our own time and money, and we only got the car for a few days. We started the test with both cars at 100%, then drove some 200 km, and arrived at the charging station with some 10% left in the battery. 
and we plug them both in obviously. And now you should be able to see the charging curves from 10 to 80% in 22 model and 24 model. One really interesting thing we also discovered was the range of the vehicles. We figured out that the new one would decimate the older one since the 2024 model had B economic glass tires and my own had E economic glass tires and obviously there should be some battery degradation. This is why we concentrated on the charging events and didn't even try to have the rules identical. We started from our own accommodations, met halfway and then started the highway journey. At the meeting point the state of charge for the 2024 was 93% and for the 2022 it was 94% due to the different traffic. But these are the figures from the highway leg excluding the set first 15 km to the meeting point. Damn, the range is virtually the same. My guess is that the BC4X releases the buffer to hide the degradation of the battery. Okay, we are now at the second charge of the day and we're, we're using the Kempor station so you get to actually see the graph of the charge on your mobile phone, that's smart. And uh, we drove some 100 km kilometers before the last charge and uh, then we came at the charger at state of charge something like 38% and plugged the cars in. And now we'll see the difference between these two models, the 2022 and 2024. 2024 and 2022 in near half battle charging. Let's see. The temperature for this charge was around minus 5 degrees Celsius. The final test was the Achilles heel of the BC4X. The vehicles were left in the cold for the night, with some 35% remaining in the battery, and then driven to a DC charger first thing in the morning. The 2024 model really aced this one when compared to 2022 model. So that was our small charging test on the 2022 BC4X and 2024 BC4X. And uh, I think I will have to say that the difference between the DC charging in cold climate between those two, it's, it's not that great. I have to be honest, it, it was nice to see uh, 85 kilowatt charging curve on a BC4X in the winter, but it could be like 180 kilowatt if I chose another brand and it was only like minus 7 degrees so so I guess I will have to say to be honest when looking at this little three charging tests uh, my verdict on the whole issue is that if you already own a BC4X from 2022 or 23 it's probably not good bang for the buck to go and upgrade for the 2024 but uh, if you're looking into buying a BC4X again European spec you have to remember then it will probably be wise to pick up the 2024 model uh, especially if you're planning on doing road trips in the cold weather there was a difference uh, in the 10% to 80% DC charge it, it was not groundbreaking like some 20 minutes uh, but when we took take a look at the um, near full battery charging or near, near half uh, DC charging, so so from 40 to 80 state of charge, that that was not that big of a difference. It was kind of small actually, and uh, it would be really interesting to see how these uh, vehicles stack up in actually cold weather, like like minus 15 celsius or minus 20 celsius but as we live in the southern Finland we don't really get those temperatures at, at least when we have the same time all the drivers and the vehicles and free time to do these tests so so maybe it's up to for guys in, in Norway or northern Finland to take another test and go out and drive these vehicles and, and post a video about it in case you're interested, we've done some other test drives with Jonas, sadly in Finnish, with the BC4X and other, other models. Uh, if you want to check them out, check out my channel. And also, uh, if you would like to hear English content about BC4X and what the hell not different vehicles as well in, in my YouTube, just write it down in the comments.
I will have to say it was a nice day doing these tests. Not too cold for filming and, and driving and goofing around around the cars, uh, but still lots of light, nice weather, not too much traffic. It's nice this time in the year in Finland, trust me.